Okay, so we're going to continue with two more examples, hopefully in this next 15 minute video. Um, you might want to pause the video if you haven't read through example four on page 152. Uh, it's the speed of an airplane tracked by radar. Um, and I'm going to try and recreate the graph over here. Okay, that's my attempt to draw a right triangle. And uh, this is going to be my cute little airplane right up here. Okay. And uh, just the way I've drawn this uh, to correspond with the textbook, the, the airplane is traveling um, back this way to the left. Okay. And so uh, what we have is an airplane that's flying on a flight path that will take it directly over a radar tracking station. So here is our radar tracking station right here. That's it. And the airplane's flying this way, and he's eventually going to be straight up above um, that radar tracking station. Okay, and you can get further information, you know, it's, the, the graph is in the, the illustration is in the, in the textbook. All right, it tells us that S is decreasing at a rate of, all right, so S, they've decided to be the hypotenuse here. So the distance um, from the airplane to the radar tra uh, tracking station is, is obviously decreasing because eventually when it's above it, um, it's going to be less than the hypotenuse here. Okay, so let's come over here and decode that. So the rate of change of S with respect to time is decreasing its negative at a rate of 400 miles per hour. It's miles. Okay. Per uh, hour. Yikes. All right. Um, so we've got the picture. S is decreasing. Got it. Decoding. Going back. Always checking. Okay. If S is decreasing at this rate, when S, when this distance is 10 miles out, that's the rate at which it's decreasing, uh, what is the speed of the plane? So I'm going to find the speed of the plane when S equals 10 miles. Okay, so what we need to know is uh, where, where, where do we get the speed from? Well, in a right triangle situation such as this, you might want to label the vertical component Y and the horizontal component X. This one's kind of tricky, but I want you to think about it. If the airplane is flying horizontally, um, then what we're going to call its speed is the change in X with respect to time. So right now we know it's specifically this amount away from, horizontally speaking, from the radar tr tracking station, but its speed is going to be um, dx dt. It's its rate of change of its horizontal component with respect to time. So that's how they got all that information. Okay, um, And I think that somehow we're um, also maybe also told that the airplane is maybe six miles in the air. That sounds about right, 30,000 feet. So I think that's given information maybe labeled on the graph here. That's not something I can find. Okay unless I was given. Okay, so let's keep ourselves on track here. What is the speed of the plane? We're finding dx dt, and I'm thinking, okay, I've identified all given quantities and quantities to be determined. I've drawn a picture. I've referenced the textbook. Okay, I need to find an equation that ties everything together. That equation is going to be Pythagorean theorem. That's the equation I'm going to differentiate with respect to time insert the values I have, and then hopefully get what I need. So Pythagorean Theorem, x squared plus, okay, now let's think about it. This plane is flying horizontally. Y is not changing. So if Y is not changing, I'm allowed to plug in the constant value, 6, square it, set it equal to, S is changing, S squared. So that's our Pythagorean Theorem. Sometimes, sometimes with Pythagorean Theorem, we might have a constant, something might not be changing, and in this case, the height above the ground is not changing. Uh, other times, both or all three of the legs of the right triangle might be changing. So it's really important to pay attention to the right triangles. All right, we're finding a rate of change of x with respect to time, so that means we're bringing in the derivative operator. Easy enough. All right, nice enough. 6 squared's derivative is 0. And then applying it to the other side, 2s ds dt. Okay, everything seems good. All right, we're finding dx dt. If you want to, you can isolate dx dt. I'm going to do this one a little different than the last one. 
meaning I'm going to divide both sides by 2x. So I'm going to have 2s divided by 2x times ds dt. Cleaning it up even more still. Uh, S divided by X times DS DT. Looks like we've got a lot of room here provided, but I'm going to come over here. Okay, so I'm finding DX DT. It's good enough here. Uh, I'm thinking about what the units of the answer are going to be. If I'm finding the change in the speed of the airplane, well, I'm thinking that's going to be the units of miles. Okay, and uh, the time would be, I guess, we're in hours. So the answer is going to have miles per hour in it. All right, do we have S? Yep, we do. Okay, do we have a rate of change of S with respect to time? Yeah, we do. So we've got this component and we have this component. DS DT is negative 400. We'll talk more about that in a minute. This would be one where you could include the units in your work and then not have to put any thought into the units of measure for the answer. Okay, you might want to see that, and you might see by now that we're kind of stumbling here. I'm kind of avoiding this whole situation with x. I don't know what x is. I have no idea what goes here. Okay, but there are a couple of problems where you're going to be expected to be able to find something that's missing that they don't give you, and you will have the skills to do so. So when y is 6, and that always occurs, y is 6, when x, or s, excuse me, is 10, when that's happening, what is the value of x? Well, let's just use Pythagorean theorem. Um, and this one is easy enough we can do mentally. When you think about Pythagorean theorem, we square the hypotenuse, so we get 100, minus the square of the leg, 36. So I'm going to have 100 minus 36, which is 64, and square root that. So the missing leg is going to be eight. They might straight up. They might not straight up give you every every piece of information, but they will give you enough so that you can go back and dig in and find what you're missing. All right, simplifying. Um, let's see, eight goes in there. Fifty. So this looks like negative five hundred miles per hour. Okay, um, so let's kind of talk about the answer for just a minute. It says, what is the speed of the plane? Well, speed is always a positive number, so we want to take the absolute value of the velocity. Absolute value of velocity is speed, and so my answer is positive 500. Remember, the negative just assigns direction, and uh, because the airplane is moving back to the left, um, we would associate a negative number with that. That's our velocity. Our speed is the positive value. Okay, so that's our answer. All right, let's look at the next example. You might want to pause the video and uh, at least take the time to read through the problem as well. Okay, trying to draw the picture of what's going on here. I, I think this is the one with the rocket. So I'm going to draw another right triangle. I'm just actually stealing the picture that's in the book. Okay, so um, we've got a camera down here. Okay, and I think we're watching a... Um, a rocket lift off, so it's going up this way. So again, we have a right triangle. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of Pythagorean theorem, but uh, maybe not. Maybe it's a trig ratio. All right, we know that the camera is 2,000 feet from the base of the rocket. Um, and then obviously this distance is changing as the rocket goes up, and I think they call it S okay, here. Uh, we're talking that this is theta. So the higher the rocket goes, the greater theta is. Okay, so let's start decoding. Find the rate of change in the angle of elevation. Rate of change in the angle of elevation. So, um, actually, I'm just going to start off by saying we're going to find a rate of change of theta with respect to time. That's, that, that's the translation. Find d theta dt at 10 seconds, so when t equals 10. Okay, so this is the notation that supports what we're finding. Oh no, don't, don't, don't start doing this. All right, um, and I think some additional information is given. Um, actually, I think we're told that S is equal to 50 T squared. Okay, so here we're going to 
go ahead and kind of think about how we're going to find d theta dt because we've identified the given quantities and um, drawn a picture. Okay, this next thing is to figure out what kind of equation is going to tie this all together. What kind of equation uh, can I pull in here? Well, it's not going to be Pythagorean theorem because uh, we're not talking about this leg. We're talking about the angle. So this is um, your right triangle trigonometry. So it looks like um, I have information about the adjacent side to the angle. And I'm talking about some information about the opposite. So when I think about opposite and adjacent, um, we would want to think about the tangent ratio. So we do know that the equation we're going to use is a trig ratio. Tangent of theta equals opposite no. s over 2,000. Okay, now think about this for just a second. Um, S is changing, so if that variable is changing, we have to put it in as the variable S. Uh, now, this distance does not change, so you want to take advantage of that constant right there. So we're going to end up differentiating this equation and then plugging in the values that we need. So I'm finding d theta dt. Here's theta. Okay, I'm going to bring in this derivative operator and see how to go from there. All right, so the derivative of tangent is secant squared, leaving theta alone, times the derivative of theta with respect to time. So there's the notation we need, equals. Okay, now look over here. Don't do quotient rule. No, please don't do quotient rule. This is 1 over 2,000 times s. It's a constant multiplier. So it's, um, the derivative is going to be um, 1 over 2,000 times ds dt. Okay, so we are finding, oh no, 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 ds dt. Okay, we need to find d theta dt, so I've got this issue to get rid of. Uh, we do have ds dt. No, we do not have ds dt. So we're going to have to do a little digging, a little work uh, to solve for d theta dt, and this one gets a little strange for, for students sometimes. Okay. Um, what I think I'm going to do with this problem is instead of inserting values, I'm going to go ahead and get d theta dt by itself. So that would require that I multiply by um, 1 over secant squared. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, 1 over secant squared on both sides of the equation. All right, do a little cleanup here. Those will cancel. Okay, this is going to be 1 over 2,000 times the value ds dt. Okay, and let's spend some, some, a little bit of time just kind of thinking about, please don't disappear, secant of theta, secant squared here of theta. Well, the reciprocal is cosine, so if I have 1 over secant squared, that's really just the same thing as cosine squared theta. And I think it's going to be easier to work with cosine squared as opposed to, um, you know, 1 over secant squared. So I hope all your stuff is still there. I guess this pen doesn't like working more than 15 minutes. I know you don't either. I heard that. <laughs> okay, so let's now see if we can find these values. Oh, please. I know you wrote it down right the first time, so it should be there. Okay, d theta dt equals... 1 over 2,000. Okay, ds dt. I'm coming up here and I'm going, you know, there's a relationship between s and, and t, and if I bring in the derivative operator, d over dt, to both sides of this equation, I will get what I need. So this becomes ds dt. This one's mean. They're having us do a little more work. Okay, now notice that these variables match up. Come back! Notice these variables match up, so it's just simply the power rule, and it's going to be 100t. It could be times dt over dt, but that's just going to be 1. So ds dt is 100t, but I need a value to go in here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to what was given. The time was... 10, 10 seconds. So in this case, that calculation is going to give us 1,000. So if you think about this product right here, we're going to have 1,000 over 2,000, which is just going to be a half. 
Okay. Here's where we might struggle a little bit. I need to kind of quickly get through this, but remember that cosine squared theta means find cosine and then square it. So I'm going to pull the square off the cosine and just put the cosine value in here. Okay, coming back up here, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, S, in this case, when T is 10, if you square T, 10, you get 100, you multiply by 50, this side length is going to be 5,000. Do I have enough information to find the hypotenuse so that I could build a cosine fraction? Remember, cosine, again, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. What's missing is the hypotenuse. So I needed to get this value right here. Okay, this is 2,000. Uh, okay, so and this is 5,000. So I have both the legs I'm going to take and square both of them. So look in the textbook. You guys can see what the author did too here. And I'm going to create that square root. So that's what I'm going to attempt to put underneath here. Okay. All right. And I'm just about done. Just a few more calculations here. Okay, so I'm coming back here. And I have d theta dt equals, remember this product, I know you have it, is one half. Oh my goodness. Okay, and then here, I don't know what those are. Okay, and I don't know what's going on here. Okay, I'm going to try and finish this up. I don't know. I have to look at some things here, but I think you guys can kind of see where we're at. Okay, why is this not taking it now? I don't know. Let's see if I can get through this. I think you see where it's going, though. This is going to be a half here. And when you square this fraction over here, you're going to get 2,000 squared on top. And without a calculator, I'm not going to try and find that. Oh, my goodness. And on the bottom, when I square, because in a fraction, I square the top and the bottom, I'm going to end up with 2,000 squared plus 5,000 squared. Okay? And if you want to take a moment and look in the textbook, you can kind of see how the author left that answer as well. Um, but um, the pen's kind of going crazy, so I'm going to have to stop here and just say reference the textbook. Okay? All righty. Well, hopefully that helped right there. I'm talking through those examples that were in the book.